1992, I was trafficked through the adoption market from Colombo to Norway. My adoptive parents at the time was told that I was given for adoption with the consent of my mother, but Amma was told that we were going to an alternative care home where we would be living for two years and then she could bring me back home. Have you ever wondered what it might feel like to be adopted especially when it's done so illegally. Edith Cowan University, Sri Lanka, the only full Australian degree is called 077-3900. In Sri Lanka, surveillance and support services for adoption operate at a minimal scale. The Department of Probation and Child Care Services responsible for bringing down the practice of illegal adoption is under-resourced, under-trained and not assisted by strong and supportive administrative structures according to a senior lecturer at the University of Colombo. What we don't talk about in the adoption field of a foreign adoption is that one loses your whole identity. You lose your roots, your mother tongue, you lose the food, the family and you also lose the whole community around you. So I was struggling a lot with that. Back in the 80s, thousands of Sri Lankan babies were sold for adoption in Western countries. These babies were conceived in what's called a baby farm, where women were found to be raped and intentionally impregnated to conceive children under prison-like conditions. Later, the babies were sold for adoption. In 1987, one baby farm was raided, exposing 20 newborns and 22 women who were found held inside. So the question becomes, why are cases of this magnitude happening in Sri Lanka? And why aren't we talking about it? I think the reason why it's so hard to talk about the trafficking scene in the adoption market in Sri Lanka is because everyone is involved in it. From the highest of the highest power to the lowest of the lowest in society. And everyone has been involved in this, from tuk-tuk drivers, travel guides, to police officers, probation officers, lawyers, courts, passport office, probation office, the government. The unfortunate part is that they didn't think that we would come back and raise our voices and share our stories and hold the system accountable. The Sri Lankan adoption law started back in the pre-colonial era. Candians who wanted to provide a home and a family to someone else's child made use of adoption. Far out in Jaffna, there are customary adoption laws called Tesvalame that apply to Tamil inhabitants. According to this, one could adopt a stranger's child only when their relatives refuse to give up their own. Sri Lankan adoption comes under 1941 adoption law, initially it's adoption ordinance, and uh, anything in relation to get a child into your family, you have to follow the adoption law. There are procedures, there are prerequisites, and there are court interventions in relation to that. On the grounds that the court is the supreme guardian of the child, and on that basis, the court has to decide whether you are a qualified person to have a child who is not your biological child. In 2019, the Dutch Minister of Justice and Security established a committee to examine possible abuses in inter-country adoptions between 1967 and 1998 that focused on Bangladesh, Brazil, Colombia, Indonesia and Sri Lanka. That's not all. In the same year, the government in Switzerland hired a committee to investigate the role that Swiss authorities played in illegal adoptions from Sri Lanka between 1973 and 1997. Two years later, the committee published a report on its investigations that described the facilitation of illegal adoptions to the Netherlands from abroad. This report revealed that the Dutch adoption agencies as well as several government officials had knowledge of these abuses. Where can we draw the line? On a national scale, more and more Western countries have adopted truth commissions that inquire into past wrongdoings of their state, including abusive practices in international adoptions. Full investigations into illegal adoptions are a strategy that Sri Lanka is yet to take up. However, there's hope on the horizon for Sri Lanka because for the first time, the CID is moving towards investigating a case of illegal adoption. 
The victim has requested to connect thousands of other cases to this investigation, opening a path to prevention and justice in the future. For parents who are struggling yet yearning to provide for their children, is adoption the best, if not the only option available at the grassroots level? We have this case right now at Root Search Center where a mother wanted to take care of her child, but she had to sell the child because of the financial crisis that is going on. The mother does not have an identity card, so she could not go through the legal adoption system, and she wanted us to assist her in the process of giving the child up for illegal adoption, but in a safer way. And we couldn't, because it's an illegal market of babies. What we could, however, was to assist the mother by financial support so she could keep the baby instead. And this child is living now with her mother because of this financial support that our donors is giving us.